Stockpiling tall fescue for winter grazing is definitely the most economical feeding strategy for cow-calf operations in Kentucky. But we're always going to need a little bit of hay in our feeding operation. And it's important to understand the quality of the hay that you're feeding. When you understand the quality of the hay you're feeding, you can supplement that hay so that you don't lose condition on your cows. Now when we sample hay, we need to sample it by a lot. And the lot is one field and one harvest of hay. So say for example, field A cutting, first cutting would be one lot of hay. That needs to be sampled separately from say the second cutting from that field or the third cutting from that field or the first cutting from another field. So we sample by lot, that's really important. And the second thing that's really important is that we get a good sample and we do that by using a, a coring tool. So we don't want to just take a piece of hay and pull it out of a sample and send it in for uh, pull it out of a bale and send it in for analysis. We want to actually take a bale core. And when we sample a lot, we'd like to get somewhere between 15 and 20 cores per hay lot. And then we composite those samples together mix them up and send the whole sample in for analysis. And I'll show you why we want to send the whole sample in in a minute after we core a few bales. So it's important when we're sampling hay that we use a, a probe to sample the hay with. For round bales, we want to sample hay from the side. And for rectangular bales, large square bales or small square bales, we want to sample the bales from the end. Uh, and again, we want to get 20 cores per lot and then submit all those cores to the lab and do not separate them into a smaller size sample. One of the important things to remember when we take a hay sample is that we want to submit the whole sample. So never subdivide it. You want the lab to grind the whole sample. And the reason why is if you look at the bottom, there's lots of little fine material at the bottom. When we separate it, we often grab just this coarse material and that really changes the quality analysis of this forage. So it's important to submit the whole sample and let them grind it into a homogeneous size and then they can subdivide it at the lab. All right, so once we get the sample taken out in the field, it will come into the lab and then we will dry the sample overnight. So the procedure for doing that is that we take the sample from our, our bag from the field and we transfer it into a paper sack. And we want to make sure we get the whole sample in there and that we don't miss any of the fine material in the bottom of the bag. Okay, once we get the sample in here, we'll weigh it on a scale and we'll record what we call the fresh weight on the bag. So this sample weighs 49.9 grams. And we'll just write that right on our bag. Okay, once we get the uh, sample weighed, We'll place that sample in the dryer overnight. And the dryer is set to around 55 degrees Celsius, which would be the equivalent of about 130 degrees. And we'll dry it overnight. Now drive any remaining moisture in that sample off. And we'll be able to determine the dry weight of the sample. The reason that we need the dry matter on the sample is that all the rations are balanced on a dry matter basis. All right, it's been overnight and we're getting the sample out again and we're going to reweigh it to determine the uh, dry matter. All right, so once we get the dry weight on this, we'll copy the dry weight down and record it on our data sheet. All right, now we're going to head up to the grinding uh, facility and we're going to grind this sample to get it ready for forage quality analysis. All right, so we've got our sample that we've dried overnight in the lab and we're ready to grind it. Um, at this point in time. So we use a two-stage grinding process. We grind through a Wiley mill through a two millimeter screen first, and then we'll grind through a second grinder called a UD uh, Cyclone sample mill uh, for our second stage of grinding. I'm gonna open this up. Any things that are left we'll put in this. Okay. And then we'll undo the sample collection bottle and just dump that in there. And now we have a pretty homogeneous sample. So instead of having a lot of large particles and small particles, it's, it's pretty much all two millimeters or less. Okay, so we're now going to grind through a UD Cyclone sample mill. 
And this is the second grinder. This has a one millimeter screen in it. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. So we've ground it through the UD Cyclone sample mill. Now we're gonna transfer that ground sample, which is very fine, almost like a powder now, into our sample bag. Okay, the goal of the grinding process is to go from a heterogeneous sample, so a sample with large and small pieces in it, to a very homogeneous sample. And that's what we've done here. You can see that all the particles are now about the same size in here, less than one millimeter. All right, so we started with a hay bale and we used a hay probe to get a cord sample. We took that cord sample into the lab, we weighed it, dried it, and reweighed it, and then we went up to our grinding facility and we ground that sample through a two-stage grinding process. And we ended up with this, which is essentially the hay, but in a powder form. Now we're ready to analyze this hay for forage quality. And we're gonna use a technique called near-infrared spectroscopy. And what we do is we take a cell, we call these ring cups, it has a quartz glass in it at the bottom, and we dump that sample into this cell. And then we put a, a foam back in there just to hold that forge tight against the glass. And we just brush the excess forge dust off of there and we're ready to take this to the near-infrared spectrophotometer and analyze it. All right, about 80% of the samples that are analyzed for forage quality in the United States are analyzed using a technology called near-infrared spectroscopy. And essentially what the near-infrared spectrophotometer does is it takes light and it shines light in the near-infrared spectrum onto the sample, and then it measures what gets reflected back and then we can correlate what gets reflected back to different forage quality parameters very precisely. For example, crude protein, acid detergent fiber, neutral detergent fiber, digestibility, and so forth. So right now we're ready to analyze this sample. So we're gonna go ahead and put this sample into the machine. And then we'll come up here and hit scan. So now we have the sample scanned. We need to go in and predict that sample using a, an equation that's uh, maintained by the Near Infrared Spectroscopy Consortium. So it's an equation that's based on wet chemistry and then um, referenced back to the Near Infrared Spectrum. So these are the results. So in this file, we have 12 samples, the, the 13 samples. The 13 sample is the sample that we just scanned. Um, and each one of these windows is different. This is dry matter. We've got 91, almost 92% dry matter in this particular sample. We can go down to crude protein. We've got about 11.5% crude protein in this sample. And we have a whole bunch of different constituents on this list that we can look at and uh, find out their digestibility or, um, or fiber content. Now we've got our sample taken and we send it into the lab and we got our results back. Now, the hay sampling is really worthless unless we actually do something with those results. So what we want to do is we want to use those results to help us manage our hay feeding program. And so what we get back, we'll get an estimate of energy and an estimate of crude protein and then a dry matter value for each one of those samples. And we can take that information and put it into what we call the UK Cow Forage Supplement Tool. And what this is, is, is a way that we can figure out how much of a supplement we may or may not need to feed with that particular lot of hay. So what, to use this, we need the dry matter of the hay. Um, we need the crude protein value, the neutral detergent fiber. That's an estimate of how much of that hay the animal can actually eat. And then we need an estimate of the energy and that's total digestible nutrients. And those will all be on your, your hay results when you get it back from the forage testing lab. And then the last thing we need to know is the stage of production of the, of the cow. Is she lactating with a calf or is she dry? 
If we have that information, we can put that into the supplement tool, which is available online. Um, or you can go to your extension office and your extension agent can help you with it. And I've got a couple examples here. So in this particular example, we've got a, a hay, hay lot that has 8.6% crude protein. That's a pretty, pretty low crude protein. And it's got an energy value or a TDN value of 53. So that's pretty low also. So this is definitely gonna need some supplement. When we put this information in our, our uh, hay supplementation tool, it spits out a, a number of different supplements and how much of each one of those supplements we would need to feed to meet the, the uh, requirements of a lactating brood cow. So for example, uh, if we were gonna feed soybean hulls, we'd have to feed the hay as much as it could eat, plus 10.6 pounds of soybean hulls per day for this particular hay lot. Now keep in mind, this hay was a pretty low, low quality hay. The second hay lot I just wanted to mention to you was, was a much higher quality hay lot. We had a, a crude protein concentration of over 12%, which should meet the crude protein requirements of a lactating brood cow. And then we had an energy or a TDN value of around 58.7%. Per, uh, the requirement would be around 60% for a lactating brood cow, so just a little bit low in energy. And as a result of the higher hay quality, instead of having to feed 10.6 pounds of soybean hulls, we would only need to feed around two pounds of soybean hulls for this particular lot of hay to, keep, to supply the nutrients that a lactating brood cow needs.